You know, really the critical milestone during this whole period of time was kind of, it was, it was like middle of June now. And now we were told it's really almost done. Okay. And you need to be ready July 2nd. It's just, it's closing July 2nd. And in fact, the words that we heard often were, you need to take a leap of faith and start preparing for this deal to be done on, on, on July 2nd. And the leap of faith was, I, I think at that time, we might have had about 10 million in the bank. Okay. But we have a lot of vendor. We have, we have a lot of liabilities. And so, I mean, and, and more than $10 million worth of liabilities. And so to prepare for the deal, we, we're, we're legally obligated to do everything that we can to reduce those liabilities down to zero. Hopefully. Essentially, though crippling your cash on hand at the same time, if a deal We needed to cripple happen. our cash on hand, just in, 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 yes. So that's the leap of faith, right? If a deal doesn't happen, we're breaking ourselves, essentially, and we're actually losing runway. We're, we're losing time to bid a completed deal. Um, but this deal was so good for our customers. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a good leap of faith. It was the proper leap of faith to take. You know, and, and it wasn't just me, it was, you know. Yeah. Everyone felt like, okay, we need to get ready. The deal got pushed back to the ninth. Okay. You know, now we're pushing it, you know, because we were expecting this deal to end like very, you know, we, we left ourselves enough money to get through July. Okay. But not really into August. So you've got very little cash on hand leading into to July 9th, I mean, normal. Right. Is anything being done in, in terms of, if something doesn't happen, having funds on hand or, or, or potentially collecting player loans or doing something to yeah, ensure that the idea of collecting player fall. loans or, or, or member loans at this point was just a complete, we couldn't even mm -hmm. talk to some of these people, right? It's, no, that wasn't gonna happen. I did have an interesting conversation though. You know, there, there's, there's the well-publicized money that Tom Dwan owed the company. And, and I think Tom had always said that, uh, that I guess if it, you know, that if someone bought the company, he would settle up with them. Mm -hmm. And that if a deal didn't happen, somehow he would get this money into the poker community or maybe give it to the deal. I, I don't really know what his plan right. was with that money. I disagreed with his, with his thinking. I thought that he, that the company, excuse me, that the company would get more leverage out of his money in terms of helping the players being with the, with the company. Mm -hmm. So I, I did have an interesting conversation with him in, um, in early July uh, about that. And I, and I just said to him, look, I, I don't know if a deal's gonna happen or not, but our burn rate right now, the amount of money that we're spending on rent and salaries is about a million and a half a month. And if we can't get a deal done by the end of July, can I count on you to give us the money you owe the company, which is gonna buy us another month? Mm -hmm. And I said, here's the, here's the math. You know, what is one month worth to the company right now? In terms of, you know, our ability to potentially get a deal that's gonna get our customers paid. And I said, look, it's got to be worth 10% there, there, there's got to be some chance that we find another buyer, or maybe we can complete the deal with Stars, or you know that that money that that month was potentially maybe a ten percent shot. So, so you basically kind of like run the math analysis. When you run the math, well, what's ten percent? What's ten percent of three hundred and fifty million? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot more than one point five million. And so, and so he did. He, he agree basically or? agreed with the math. Okay. And and he said, look, if you really need it in in August, I will get you the money. Now, luckily, you don't need it in August, and the deal it, does it, close, but... Yeah, it, it, it got very dicey. You know, uh, it was supposed to close on the 9th. Um, in fact, we thought it was, it was going to close on the 9th all the way up till about 10 o'clock at night. What happened at 10 o'clock? I don't know. <sighs> and I really don't know. The deal didn't happen. 
Did and we got very pessimistic signs back from both sides. Mm -hmm. The deal might be dead. You know. The deal might be dead. Well, we had heard it might be. Yeah, it went from it was about to close. Something happened. I do not know. I don't want to speculate. Mm -hmm. As you close a deal with Poker Stars on, on July 31st, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, especially when, when I, you know, I br bring up earlier in, in our conversation that it was rumored that Poker Stars was interested in, in, in summer or June of, of 2011. Why do you think it took so long for a deal with stars to get done when there was alleged interest so early on? And do you feel that, you know, had you pursued a deal in, in, in the beginning stages and, and maybe a, paid a little bit more attention to, to the communication or, or, or whomever was reaching out from stars, that this could have been resolved sooner? Yeah, I actually don't think so. Um, and it was actually reported um, in the media that we did reach out to stars at some point last summer, and we did. Mm -hmm. And I think they were very excited about the idea. They, they, they saw the opportunity, and I think they love the idea of being able to rescue our customers because PokerStars really cares about the poker community. Um, they have handled themselves with nothing but the utmost professionalism in this whole mess for themselves and, uh, and ultimately for our customers. Um, and this is another example of it. We reached out to them and we presented the opportunity to them. There was no real conditions on the opportunity. They were gonna come back with an offer. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly that offer was going to include them taking complete control of the company, and that was A-OK -okay by all of us. Mm -hmm. But they came back within about two or three days, and at least the answer I got through our attorney that talked to them, so I don't know for sure, but sort of the answer I got was they just can't do it because it's, it's, too, it's too complicated, it's too, it's too messy, it's potentially too expensive. And this was something that really weighed on all of our deals, mm -hmm. was the, the potential cost of the DOJ action. The company, full, just Full Tilt Poker, was facing a billion dollar judgment. I just, I, you can't overemphasize how hard that is to overcome when you're trying to make a deal. Whoever, you know, you, you get people really, and this is what we kept running into, you got excited people who were going, yes, 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 this sounds great, this sounds great. And then you start doing the due diligence and you get to this box labeled cost of DOJ litigation, and there's a big question mark there. And it could be anywhere from zero to a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to complete a deal, and I think Stars saw that same problem. Like, if they, if they had bought us last summer, um, they were a company that was, at that time, facing a $1.5 billion judgment, and now if they had purchased us, they were going to be a company facing a $2.5 billion judgment. And I just, the uncertainty that that brought into the equation, um, I, I, I think they just had to say thanks, but no thanks. We're really excited, but this just can't work. And um, I applaud them, because they didn't have to tell us that. They could have gone to Dublin, they could have done due diligence, they could have basically gotten a whole bunch of free information from us, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't. They, they very respectfully and very quickly gave us a no, which so I appreciate. What changed in, in a year? Was it the fact that they successfully negotiated with the DOJ? Yeah, so, in, so clearly what changed was the uncertainty. If they just buy us last summer, as much as the poker community would have wanted to do it, as much as poker stars probably wanted to do it last summer. Now it's like, okay, now there's poker stars in full tilt. Now they're coming to the table with the DOJ to talk about possible settlement. What changed between last summer and, I guess, March sometime, is they were making, presumably, significant progress, and they were talking to the DOJ, and they were, and they were discussing a settlement. And at some point, 
there was an opportunity for our assets to become a critical part of that deal. Maybe, you know, again, I'm speculating, maybe there was an impasse. Maybe our assets bridged the gap. I don't know, mm -hmm. right? But clearly, our assets were an important part of that deal for both sides. I think the DOJ really wanted to see the customers get paid. And I think PokerStars wanted to see our customers get paid. And so they made enough progress in their discussions that all of a sudden somebody, and I don't know which side, said, hey, how about Full Tilt's assets? Maybe we can, maybe this changes everything about our discussion and we can, and we can accomplish a lot with this one deal. Mm -hmm. And that's what changed. And um, it took a while to get there, obviously, but deals with the DOJ don't happen overnight. When, when the deal closes, obviously it's probably a, a fairly momentous day for you after, you know, the past 15 months. You know, what sense of closure did you have personally and what were, what were you feeling, you know, that day that you knew that... that Look, I'm not going to have a sense of closure until our U.S. customers have been made whole, at least as much as, as they can. And I hope it'll be a lot. Um, in, ter in terms of total closure. But I really don't, it, it, was, it was such an emotionally exhausting month, and actually 15 months mm -hmm. for me. Um, you know, in, I, I, I invested in the decisions that needed to be made to get us, to, to sort of keep us alive. Not that I was making or had final say on a lot of these decisions, but I was there on phone calls over and over again, recommending we should do this, we should do that. Um, and it was just very exhausting, the whole 15 months. And the ups and downs, the emotional ups and downs were, were very difficult. I, I did get a lot of support, you know. Um, I talked to Eric Seidel a lot. He was a very calming person who was, who was always just so focused on our customers the same way that I was in terms of like, you know, he would like end every call, just get our customers paid, you know. Um, my family, my wife, you know, these were very difficult and dark times. Um, and I don't know that I get through it without that support. I would like to address one thing. Uh, there was a blog written called The Silence of Full Tilt Poker by Mac Lance. Mm -hmm. And um, basically in it, he talks about how ashamed he is of the company, not necessarily for the position it was in, um, because I think he, he believed that, you know, the company was in the position it was in because of management, not because the owners had all decided to all pay themselves a whole bunch of money when, the, when, when they shouldn't have. So I, so I think he, 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 he understood why the position, why the company was in the position it was in. But he said that he was ashamed of the company because of our silence. And um, so I, I would certainly like to address that charge. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all I can say is that I feel like I owed the company, sorry, I owed the poker community my silence. At, at no time, as, as desperate as I was to defend myself against all the things that were being written against me, at, at no time during the 15 months did I ever feel like going and doing something like this was going to help our, our customers get paid. It just wasn't going to happen. We had been told by the DOJ and every group that we were ever in any kind of a contract with, you can't talk about the deal. And in fact, you know, the leaks, the, there was a period of time where there were a bunch of leaks, like, yeah. like September, October time frame. And at some point, the DOJ even told us, one more leak and we're just walking away. It's over. I mean, you know, and they had, a, they, had, they had a right to tell us that. You know, the leaks had gotten a little outrageous. And 
Um, I just wasn't going to risk a deal so that I could speak out. And um, so sort of the second issue that the blog addressed was this idea that the, that the, that the poker world deserved to know whether they were getting paid or not. And, you know, all I can tell you is that I don't think the poker world, if, if, if somehow, you know, I set up some web page or just a Twitter account that sort of announced to the world every day, like a price, here are the chances you're going to get your money. Mm -hmm. If I had set that up during the course of the 15 months, it would have been torture. Because that Certainly. number would have swung wildly from day to day. Nobody, no single person in the world could have answered that question, are the customers going get, to get paid? When you think about the complexity of what it was going to take to complete a deal, no one had that answer. I wish I did, but I didn't. I mean, but certainly looking back, you can understand. I absolutely the understand it, and, and and the kind of no, 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 no. This isn't about. This is. I'm just addressing a very specific question. Why were you silent, mm -hmm. and why didn't you tell the players whether or not they were going to get paid? That's my answer to that question. I a hundred percent understand the anger. The players had every right to be angry. The position that they were put in was unconscionable. There's no excuse. Um, and that was their money, and they deserved to get it, and they weren't getting paid. There's, I, ho I, have, I have no issue with our customers. There, there's been obviously a lot written about you specifically, about the company, about other owners, Chris Ferguson, um, essentially saying, you know, as a, as a community, we'll never see Howard Lederer again at the World Series. We'll never see Chris Ferguson again at the World Series. Chris Ferguson's banner should be taken down at the World Series, you know, just, just like Russ Hamilton's, you know, who stole uh, money from, from Absolute and, and UB customers. Well, what is your your opinion on that? And and now that you have you know taken the first step and kind of sat down and, and to discuss this and, and bring a lot of the, the discussion to light, do you foresee yourself becoming an active member in the poker community again, whether it be at the World Series or, or other events? And quite frankly, do you think that you know? Are you concerned for your safety? Are there, uh, are, are, are there, what are, what are the concerns that you have and, and, and if, if, if at all you plan on coming back? Look, ultimately, you know, whether or not I become an active member of the community where I have a voice, that's not up to me, you know, and it doesn't really, that doesn't really concern me in a lot of ways, you know. I do, I do plan on playing poker. I've been a, po a poker player for 30 years. I, 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 I was an owner of a company that, um, that got itself into a really bad situation. But I didn't actively create that situation. I didn't, I didn't ever approve any fraudulent reports that were sent off to Alderney or to our customers. Um, I went to Dublin on April 17th to try and figure out what was going on. And when I found a problem, I committed myself to trying to fix it. And I, I made a decision that day on the 21st that the only thing that mattered to me until I was either successful or completely unsuccessful that I was going to try and use the assets of the company to effect a deal to get our customers paid. Um, it wasn't all up to me, but I knew that whatever I could do, I would do it. Um, if, 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 if the poker community decides that that is behavior that's punishable by I should be banished from poker, well, I would disagree. Um, September 10th is, is the date that the 
the deadline for the, the DOJ to file an amended uh, complaint? Are, are there anything that you can kind of, you know, do you foresee there being any changes in the next two days that, that are going to kind of affect, um, you know, what what we're, you know, what we've discussed today? I mean, are, are there are there any additional issues that, that you foresee um, with that amended complaint? Look, um, the uh, the DOJ is due to amend that complaint on July 10th. Um, September. Sorry, on <laughs> September 10th, and um, I. I don't believe that there'll be anything in the new complaint that, you know, as it relates to the fraud charges, either before or after April 15th, um, because there is no evidence of that, so I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Um, uh, I am expecting, I guess, you know, that there will be sort of a new theory, sort of a plan C um, in terms of, you know, what statute uh, they will be claiming that the forfeiture is justified. So, you know, they think that online poker is illegal, obviously still. Mm -hmm. They base that belief on the Wire Act, which is now no longer uh, been ruled to apply to poker, actually by the DOJ. Um, in the amended complaint against me, they uh, used the, uh, the statute IGBA, which um, uh, with the De Cristina ruling, has now been shown not to apply to a poker, at least in one important courtroom in this country. Uh, so I would expect that they're going to use a th some sort of a third statute, a more attenuated statute, uh, on which to base that claim. But again, I don't know. What, if any, are, are your final words for the poker community and for the full tilt poker customers that were affected by this tragedy? As, as an owner of Full Tail Poker, uh, I took and I take full responsibility for what happened. And what happened wasn't right, and it caused a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and, um, and in some cases just inconvenience for three million customers. And um, that, that, that wasn't right. And for that, I'm truly sorry. And uh, I look very much forward to the reopening of the site under PokerStars leadership. I am incredibly thankful for their incredible, prof their incredible professionalism, the way they handled the situation. Um, and I'm going to be rooting for the company every day. Um, I can't tell you how happy I am that the deal happened, um, that hopefully our customers are all going to be made whole, and that the brand and the software and that the company will live on in their hands.